Hi everyone, I'm Maria McLachlan and this video is in response to somebody called Sikanda G and she is a trans identifying female who decided to troll my channel. Bad move. Uh, she was commenting under a video in which I responded to comments from viewers. She did not engage with anything I said in that video or anything I've said in any other. And her first comment was, you keep complaining about progressive people not arguing with you. No, I have never once complained about progressive people not arguing with me. What I said in the video she comments under was this. Others were snarky, stupid, dishonest, abusive, and generally confirm what I have said repeatedly about trans activists not having any coherent arguments. Sikanda continues, but you need to understand that not only have many of us already tried to debate TERFs and gotten nowhere because you people are not very intelligent, but many people don't find this ideology worthy of debate. We don't go around debating flat earthers either. At this point, TERF propaganda has already been debunked several times. Blah, blah, wine, wine. We can't keep pointlessly debating people with little capacity for rational thought forever. I assure you, dear viewers, that is a real comment. I did not make it up. Thank you, Sikanda, for that superb illustration of exactly what I was talking about. Snarky, stupid and dishonest. And what you call this ideology is the simple truth that sex matters, it can't be changed, and you don't find it worthy of debate because you don't have a coherent argument. So I asked her for her definition of gender with a view to including her answer in a video I'm making on sex and gender. And I was going to include it, but the video is already becoming too long. There is a limit to how long I can stand the sound of myself prattling on in one session. So I decided to make a separate shorter video just dealing with her response. So she said, I define gender in terms of gender identity and social role. This does not bode well. I asked her for her definition of gender. I did not ask for a definition of gender identity because obviously gender identity means you identify with whatever gender means to you. And I'm trying to establish what she thinks the word means. Anyway. Gender identity includes two elements. One element is a preference for the kind of embodiment and social role members of the group, historically called women or men, typically have. The other element is self-categorization into the historically established categories of man or woman or outside of those categories. OK, let's dispense with the second element first. I think that it is historically established that the categories of man and woman refer to adult human males and females, but how does self-categorization differ from self-identification? For the sake of argument, let's say there are three categories, man, woman and non-binary. And today I am categorizing myself as non-binary. Or, to put it another way, I am identifying as non-binary. I mean, they mean the same things, don't they? I think this element is superfluous and we can get rid of it. Now, the first element I've divided into two because she says a preference for the embodiment and social role, which suggests she sees embodiment and social role as separate but connected. The word embodiment means giving a tangible form to an idea or a principle or a quality, as in the embodiment of good or evil or femininity or the Dunning-Kruger effect. 
What you are doing here, Sikander, is reducing womanhood and manhood to ideas or perhaps an essence or a spirit. But you are not explaining or quantifying these ideas of womanhood and manhood. You are not saying what this essence comprises to make it feminine rather than masculine or in between or neither. If by embodiment she means embodying the attributes that are traditionally associated with one sex or the other, and if she were to give specific examples of such attributes, she might, for example, say strength and bravery and good at fixing things, I don't know, for men, and she might say gentleness and compassion and feminine beauty for women. That would be a truthful answer, but it would also confirm that gender identity is about identifying with stereotypes, and that is not progressive. To affirm someone's so-called gender identity when they claim to be what is in fact the other sex means that you simply place the constrictions of the other sex on them instead of those constrictions of their own sex on them. There is nothing progressive about that, nor in medicalizing one's healthy body to change one's appearance, nor in trying to compel other people to go along with your fantasy and change their speech to suit you. The progressive view is to challenge those stereotypes and say people can be whoever they are, Women can be brave and noble and, what was it, good at fixing things, and men can be caring and compassionate, etc., without pretending to be what they are not, without making irreversible changes to their perfectly healthy bodies. Now, the second part is a preference for typical social roles, but what does she mean by that? What is a man's typical social role? And what is a woman's typical social role? Things have changed quite a lot since I was a child, but it's still quite a widely held, even if not so much publicly stated view, that a woman's main role is to be the primary homemaker and child carer, and the man's role is to be the main breadwinner. And the man is the leader and the decision maker. The woman's role is to be on his arm, looking decorative, in a dress and jewellery, etc. Is that what you mean, Sikanda? Because if not, what do you mean? This is why I asked you to give an example of a social role, and you said you'd already said what social role is, which is not what I asked, and you accused me of playing games. Well, I'm accusing you of being deliberately evasive. Let's just deal with this final sentence. This includes a preference for embodiment and social role that includes elements of both or avoids elements of both. Well, just about everybody on planet Earth includes elements of both, don't we? If we take the ridiculous graphic produced by the Mermaid Charity, which is supposed to depict a spectrum of gender identities from the most feminine to the most masculine, nobody is 100% Barbie or 100% G.I. Joe. And I don't know how you avoid elements of both. Are there some qualities that aren't more associated with one sex than the other? And are there some people that only have them and none of the qualities that are strongly associated with one or other sex? I can't fathom that at all. And I bet Sikanda can't either. In her next paragraph, she explains that social role is a person's appearance. Appearance meaning dress, hairstyle, jewellery, makeup. Okay, I can roll with that. These are entirely socially constructed ideas and there is no reason why they can't be challenged. Legal status. Like what? A social role may be imposed on you as a result of your legal status. There will be expectations placed on you 
but your legal status isn't part of your social role. You sound a bit muddled, to be honest. And the way in which one is categorised in terms of the historically established categories of man and woman. Oh, it's how one is categorised by others now, not oneself. Who are these others? Man or woman in the street or people in your woke little bubble? Anyone looking at Alex Drummond, for example, instantly spots that he is a man, albeit one who is eccentric and attention-seeking. Does that mean he is a man, even though he self-categorises as a woman? If self-categorisation conflicts with how others categorise you, which one wins? According to this lesbian dating app, whatever it is, self categorization wins. That is gender ideology. And she finishes with, this definition accounts for binary as well as non-binary identities. It's not circular because it refers to historically established terms and categories with the terms man and woman being used in the definiendum but only mentioned in the definions. It also allows for self-identification while not stripping the notion of gender of all substance. That would be a fantastically clear and cogent explanation if it wasn't for the fact that it is tortuous, circumlocutory, obscurantist drivel that explains absolutely nothing. I will hazard a guess that what Sikander means by gender refers to the appearance and attributes and roles commonly associated with one sex or the other, but she is desperate to avoid spelling it out in plain English because she realises that she is kowtowing to a regressive, not a progressive ideology. I honestly think that is why most genderists avoid answering the question, what is gender? Because consciously or unconsciously, they sense a trap. They know there is nothing they can say that makes an ideology that prioritises a subjective feeling over the material reality of sex, thereby erasing the distinction between the two sex classes and disadvantaging women even further. There's no way you can make that sound progressive. I think I'll leave it there. I have more to say about gender, but I'll leave it for my next video, which I will hopefully be able to post very soon. When I told Sikanda I would be responding by video, she said she looked forward to seeing my mental gymnastics. I hope I've shown that I'm not the one performing mental gymnastics here. I am about clarity, accuracy, honesty, and thinking critically. And Sikanda, has shown none of these. Thanks for watching. Bye.